Okay, you are fanatics. You tune into Bermuda Grass Central, and the season is winding down, and the fall is about to go bye bye. And you want to know how does BYD winterize his lawnmower? You are watching Bermuda Grass Central, changing the world one yard at a time. Okay, yard fanatics, it's real easy to uh, winterize your lawnmower. Um, first, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and get you any ordinary scraper. Dollar scraper, doesn't matter. We're gonna flip that thing on the side, make sure that the air filter and the top of the gas tank is on the top so you don't get any oil leaking out. But let's go ahead and do that. And before we flip it over, guys, make sure that we turn the fuel shut off to off so no fuel is going to the engine. And let's come around here, <clears throat> and you want to go ahead and pop that spark plug. Okay, you are fanatics. Now that we got it tilted on the side, first thing you want to do is go ahead and get you, like I said, a scraper. Make sure you got gloves and your eye protection on, and just kind of scrape some of that, some of that caked on grass and dirt. Like I said, you know, you don't have to go too crazy with it. Just try to get as much as you can. All right. And as you can see, this one didn't have too much. And if you guys, if you have a blower, go ahead and blow that stuff that you scraped off. We're going to put some stuff on the bottom of it to help break it down. But blowing that loose debris out of there just prevents a bigger mess. Okay, guys, right here, you want to make sure you get a degreaser or if that's not good enough for you, get a product like Simple Green, which is kind of like an all organic, it won't hurt your grass at all. I'm gonna use this to do the bottom, make sure that you follow the direction. I'm using a heavy purpose mix, which is a one-to-one -one ratio. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and wet the bottom real good. Make sure you got your, um, your gloves on. You see I switched over to some latex gloves. Spray it real, real, real good. We're gonna let it soak in for probably about five minutes, all right? You know, and while you're waiting for that to soak in, it's a good idea to go ahead and remove this blade off your lawnmower at this time. Now, I've already pre-loosened it. I have a video showing you how to take it off the right way. Take that nut off, all right? Go ahead and remove your blade. Now, at this time, do not put the blade back on, period. Take the nut, screw it back in, that way you don't lose it during this process we're not going to put that blade back on at all during this process all right now what we've let it sit there and soak. we're going to go ahead and hit it again with another coat keep in mind this is a simple green so it's not going to hurt my grass then we're going to go ahead and get our water hose i like to put mine on jet to help break that stuff loose like i said guys you can get as crazy as you want cleaning this it's it's, it's up to you Okay, you are fanatics. Now look, after you went, went and <clears throat> washed the bottom of it off, lay it back down, pull it out of that area. All right, we want to move to a dry area. So we won't be working in a pile of water. Okay, you are fanatics. Now look, we got the, remember I told you to loosen that spark plug. Make sure it's hand tighten up, but, so, but you should be able to turn it back loose with your hand, but make sure it's kind of tightened back up. Re- apply the plug with for that snap. <laughs> Uh-oh. There it is. All right, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean the um, top of it. But look, look, guys, this is what I'm gonna show you. You see how all that gook is in there? Got some around there. I don't know if you can see it kind of on the spark plug cap. Looks pretty good over here. A little bit on a dipstick. Some around there. So we're gonna go ahead and take the blower 
and blow all this stuff, this this loose debris off of. See it breaking that stuff up as I spray it in there. Look at that. All right, we want to let that sit for about five minutes or so. Then we're going to rinse it off. Okay guys, what we have here is the stable fuel stabilizer. You basically just take those two black tops off. Um, you'll squeeze it and you, you're gonna put it in your container and the way it works, one ounce works with two and a half gallons of gasoline. Take the two black tops off, squeeze it and get it up to one ounce. Just pour it in guys. Shake it up when you do that also. All right, next we have the um, stable fogging oil. Um, and this is good for your two and four cylinder engines. And basically, guys, what this does is prevent internal rust on the components when you have it in storage. Now, some of you guys are seafoam guys, and they, they make the same thing. Now, the reason I'm sticking with the stable because I can get the stable fuel stabilizer and the fogging oil for a lower price than just for the price of this. This is about 10 bucks. The other two items together are about eight bucks at Walmart. All right, guys, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and remove that air filter. Take it on and off. All right, remove, remove your air filter. And I want you guys to see this now. I replaced this halfway through the season. And just look how much dust that that thing collects. So I keep telling you guys that air filters are very important. Always check your air filter. Um, after each cut if possible remove that debris away from that but don't take the blower and blow this away because you you may blow grass or dust into the intake so just do it by hand all right guys your next step we're going to go ahead and tie something on the um, bar that has keeps the engine running but this does not engage the blade but this is the main reason why i told you guys do not replace your blade at all during this process because it becomes a safety hazard, you know, anything can go wrong, so you don't want that blade on there while it's more to run. All right, go ahead, take your fogging oil. Remember, read your directions. Just spray a couple of squirts in there, and you'll see smoke come out. And the way I normally do it, I just keep hitting it with a little taste, wait a little bit, taste, and I'm waiting to see that smoke. Once I start seeing that smoke, I know it's cleaning it out, guys. And, you know, this process shouldn't take no more than 30 seconds, you know, maybe a minute, but that's kind of pushing it. But once you feel like you're satisfied that you got the clean, and me, the when I saw that big puff of white smoke, I'm, I'm satisfied. So we'll just go ahead, 
and go to the next step, which is to put the air filter back on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we close it up. Make sure it's secure. That's what I'm doing. Make sure I got it on that correctly. All right. Now, like I said, the, the spark plug, I pre-loosened it. So I'm just going to twist it off by hand. Make sure you have gloves on when you go up in there because the engine may be still a little hot. You can check your spark plug and replace it if you need to at this time. Guys, this is the trick. This is how you winterize your lawnmower. Spray this in there. One, two, three, guys. Just three seconds. That's it. Don't don't spray it and flood it out. It only takes one to two to three seconds to get this in there. Replace your spark plug. Put the cap back on. Guys, what this is going to do is prevent internal rust on the inside of your mower while it's in storage. That oil will soak into the, the, the metal parts that's on the inside of the mower. So when you get ready to start it up next season, you should not have a lot of friction going on with internal metal parts. Okay, yard fanatics. Oh, right, now if you do that process, you just winterize your lawnmower. Now I know it's going to be tempting to go ahead and crank it up after you spray the fogging solution down into the spark plug entrance, but don't. Like I said, that that chemical gets in; it soaks into the internal metal, the cylinders, and all that stuff. That way, they stay corrosion free while you're not using it for the next three to four months. Now, if you're a true yard fanatic like BYD, you're gonna use it all season long. But guys, that's pretty much it. And you can see it's, it's real clean. We got all that dirt and gook and all the gunk, all that stuff. From out of there and up under there. Okay, guys, another thing you need to do is get your favorite anti-corrosion rust um, liquid and just lubricate some of the parts that you may think that may rust out. Like, I think that screw nut right in there. Just hit it a little bit. Take a paper towel, kind of wipe the excess off the overspray. But just find little spots that you think may rust out during the storage and just spray a little bit on it. Now, the next thing I'm gonna spray, only do this if you're not going to use it. Again, you can spray just the taste on your muffler, just the taste, rub it down. And the muffler's actually in there, but the outside casing, I'm gonna make sure the stuff don't start to rust, guys. That way we can prolong it. All right, and before you start it up, make sure you wipe it off again because the heat and if that oil is still on there, it'll start smoking. It's not enough to catch fire, but this is enough to keep it from rusting. Yard Fanatics, I know that the fuel stabilizer should keep that fuel good for 24 months. BYD suggests that you run that gas out of there all the way down until it's almost gone. All right, make sure you put the cap on it when you store it. Make sure that the fuel is shut off while it's in storage. Don't have the fuel open up while it's in storage. Make sure the spark plug is tightened up. Make sure the air filter case is closed. And that's, that's pretty much it right there. The reason I'm saying run this out because even though stable will keep that fuel good for 24 months personally i like a fresh tank of gas when i start the season so i run mine all the way down even though it's some in here now i run it all the way down until it's almost out i will leave a taste in there but i will not have it filled all the way up to the tip top with fuel especially if you're going to store this in a garage or something like that if your cap 
that's not sealed tightly, you see mine make that noise, then I would make sure that I always run the gas out because you don't want the fumes coming from the gas still coming out, which will be a potential, potential fire hazard if the uh, furnace, the flame from the furnace touches that fuel, if that makes any sense. Okay guys, and if you've done all that, basically the next step is just to put it wherever you're gonna store your equipment for the winter. Me personally, I, I would recommend that to not store it in an outside storage because it gets quite cold out there. You collect a little bit more moisture. I would probably, if you got all the gas out of it, put it in your garage, guys. That's the safest place. Just make sure it's not sitting not sitting next to the um, hot water heater or the furnace um, so you don't have a potential fire hazard. Okay, you are fanatics. So just remember one thing. You're tuned into Bermuda Grass Central with BYD. This is Michael Bowman, and I'll talk to you soon.